Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit deal on Tuesday was rejected by 230 votes, the largest defeat for a sitting government in history. MPs voted by 432 votes to 202 to reject the deal, which sets out the terms of Britain's exit from the EU on the 29th of March. Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn has now tabled a vote of no confidence in the government, which could trigger a general election. The confidence vote is expected to be held late on Wednesday. The defeat is a huge blow for May, who has spent more than two years hammering out a deal with the EU. The plan was aimed at bringing about an orderly departure from the EU on the 29th of March and setting up a 21-month transition period to negotiate a free trade deal. The vote was originally due to take place in December, but May delayed it to try and win the support of more MPs. The UK is still on course to leave on 29th March, but the defeat throws the manner of the departure and the timing of it into further doubt. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will try and analyse the Brexit puzzle. Joining me on the programme today are Shiv Shankar Mukherjee, former ambassador, Ashok Sajanar, former ambassador as well, and Harshvi Panth, Head Strategic Studies, Observer Research Foundation. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of uh, The Big Picture. Ambassador Mukherjee, I'd like to begin the programme with you. You know, Prime Minister May's uh, Brexit deal has been rejected by the Parliament. Where does this leave her, really? Well, it leaves her, I think, uh, squarely in between the devil and the deep sea. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, the, the whole... Uh, uh, the, the whole march of Brexit towards, well, to, to, to repeat the word, March 29, uh, is now approaching the uh, theatre of the absurd. Her immediate task, of course, is to survive the no-confidence motion, uh, which later this evening, probably yeah. happening as we speak. And all indications are that she will survive it. If she does not, then she has a period of 14 days in which to uh, put forward and win a motion of confidence or if she loses it uh, then uh, UK is going to have to go in for another general election but most probably all all analysts in the, uh, the the conventional wisdom is that she will survive the no confidence vote in which case what are her options number one she it is widely accepted of course and that is almost inevitable that she will go back to the European Union for more concessions in this particular instance, barring uh, a few commas and full things here and there, the main concession is the question of the backstop uh, in the context of Ireland, uh, which is where uh, parties have been split down the middle and parties have been uh, against each other overall. Uh, so it's not as though it's a, it's a, a contest between the Conservatives and Labour, because Labour is split, so are the Conservatives. Hard Brexit versus soft Brexit and no, uh, 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 and, and um, a tiny minority but very vocal asking for a complete no deal hard Brexit, uh, which is being countered by yet another growing crescendo of opinion for uh, a second referendum. Mm. Uh, the, the logic is that although a referendum is supposed to be sacrosanct, the, to put, not to put a, you know, uh, to, 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 to give it very bluntly, uh, the first referendum was based on a tissue of lies and propaganda and populism. The population is now much more aware of things as they actually are. They have the much, much, much more uh, and many more facts at their disposal and therefore this referendum uh, will be a, a, a much more truthful indication, a clearer indication of what the population actually wants. Right. Uh, and, and nobody can predict which one exactly what is going to happen. happen yeah. So she goes to the European Union to, to ask for concessions on the backstop in uh, the border between uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland, which is, which is basically the issue uh, that has to be sorted out. Uh, and uh, since the European Union has made it, you know, made it absolutely clear that... Uh, they're in, you know they're sitting pretty, so they're, they're, they're in no mood to redo the entire negotiation. Right. But they may they, it will be a job for the diplomats to just find some, uh, as as we say in our profession, something that satisfies both sides mm. and means nothing. <laughs> some right. kind of language uh, which will be temporary 
and which will give the impression that it is not permanent uh, from which the EU can walk off any time. Absolutely. Right. Uh, it, so it's all up in the air. Next step after the survival from the no confidence motion back to the European Union. It looks as though keeping all these uh, imponderables in mind, mm. to me, it looks as though as you're approaching March 29 and the specter of, of a no deal crash out of the European Union and, and all that it, uh, you know, all that it implies uh, in terms of the British economy and politics. Right. Maybe then, which is legally possible, mm. asking the EU for an extension beyond March 29 and somehow trying to persuade the parliamentarians, because now parliament is in command, Absolutely. parliamentarians yeah. for a soft Brexit. Uh, how soft? Uh, how less hard? And I, th that's, I think that's that can in, be debated as well, yeah, uh, ahead in the program. Let me get, bring in uh, Professor Pant into the picture now. You know, what does a defeat of this magnitude really mean? Because this has never happened in UK Parliament's history, you know, where a government has, uh, uh, you know, uh, has been rejected by such large a scale. 230 votes was what the difference was. Well, in ordinary, uh, in, in ordinary times, this would mean that the Prime Minister resigns. But these are not ordinary times for British politics. So nothing is what it seems on the surface. And so uh, Mrs. May continues. And I think uh, many, uh, many who are opposed to her would also not like to be in that position uh, of Mrs. May. So I think uh, one thing has to be said that uh, Theresa May, given the kind of fault lines that are there in British politics on this issue, uh, has been commendable in just uh, in, in sort of carrying on uh, the task of the Prime Minister at this point. But I think the trouble uh, for her is that her own party uh, will back her up in no confidence motion because they don't want Labour to come to power, but they would not back her up on, it, on, on her on deal. A deal so yeah. Essentially, it's very clear that she doesn't command the authority of her own party. So therefore, now the, you know, if, if you're looking in terms of optics, for a prime minister not to be able to command her own party in parliament means that she, she should go. But in this case, because no one, A, wants to take that position, and B, because we are in, a, in, in, these, in this situation where we don't really know how the, uh, the math will turn up you know, if she is able to negotiate, as, as, as the ambassadors were suggesting, a better <clears throat> deal perhaps, or some sort of an arrangement, stopgap arrangement with the EU. Uh, we don't really know how this will pan out. And so we are, um, I, th I think Britain at this point politically is, is, a, is in a very difficult position because I think politically the message is that no one is in command. And when you have that situation, you imagine going to EU and asking for a better deal. Why would they give you a better deal when yeah. they know the kind of chaos that prevails in the parliament and the kind of leadership vacuum that, that EU is facing. And so you saw the kind of comments we are looking at from uh, the French president, for example, who is saying it's all very bad for the British. Uh, and they need to sort it out. You, you see the comments from Don, uh, you know, Don Tusk, Tusk who is yeah. also saying uh, perhaps they, another, another they shouldn't referendum. be a Brexit. Yeah. Exactly. That's what so he's, he's talking he's, about. He's calling for another, uh, perhaps uh, going back on Brexit uh, altogether. And because they know that they are in a commanding position and Britain, uh, by putting all its fault lines out in the open, uh, British politics is, is, uh, is, is, I think, seemingly uh, is, is incapable of getting a handle on the situation at the moment. Right. Ambassador Sajjanar. A referendum the best way forward do you think because you know ambassador Mukherjee also uh, touched upon that particular point about how several people within the UK are talking about it's been over two years since article 50 was invoked the people you know today are far more aware of brexit and maybe they'll be they will vote differently if there is another referendum well you know that's uh, one of the options on the table Frank and you know that's been mentioned uh, within uh, uh, the United Kingdom also uh, across the channel from uh, uh, Brussels and also, you know, people, former Prime Minister John Major, he's also suggested let there be a second referendum. That is definitely one of the options on the table. But of course, Theresa May has not been willing to countenance that. She's not been willing to consider that as an option because she said that uh, this would uh, lessen the confidence of the people in the British uh, uh, political system and the British political parties because we have to take forward what uh, they had told us. You know, whether, uh, uh, you do not have any reason to doubt it was a 52-48 uh, mandate at that time. This is a mandate that has been given by the people to the parliament and it's the duty of the parliament to uh, execute it, to implement it. But that having been said, of course, the circumstances today, the situation today is very different from what it was two days ago because she's who lost the vote, of course, one could say that, uh, you know, it's a very decisive uh, uh, victory for the 
Brexiteers, the, the, those who do not want this deal. But of course, you know, if you are looking at it, it is the Brexiteers from the Conservative Party and also the Labour Party. They also uh, joined with them. So it is a very, very, uh, uh, you know, coming together of two absolutely disparate uh, 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 segments of the uh, British political system who wanted to uh, dump this deal for reasons of their own. The reasons were different. So referendum definitely is one of the options. And here one would say that, you know, uh, at that time in June 2016, when the referendum took place, people voted by the heart as to, you know, that this is what they want to see. They want uh, Europe to get out of their lives, uh, Britain not to be, uh, not to, uh, you know, be guided by uh, European institutions like the European Court of Justice. They thought that they were paying too much of money. They did not, they wanted to control immigration. They did not have uh, control over the agriculture policy, over the fishing policy, etc. All these things. So they were voting with their heart. But now after two years, actually two and a half years, they've realized how difficult the whole process is, number one. And number two, were they to go for the Brexit, you know, because there are no winners in that sense. There right. is no clean Brexit deal. Then it is uh, going to be very problematic for Britain itself for its economy, for the people, for uh, its own citizens who are there. Right. And uh, so they might have got wiser and were a second referendum to take place, they will vote more with their mind. Uh, you know, in a, they are now in a much more well-informed position. And the first referendum in any which case, you know, the margin was, was nominal. Yeah, it was you know, 52 to 48. 48 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so uh, not too much. And... Uh, you know, I think the people had made up their minds. So even as far as now the business is concerned, although the British economy has not done too badly over the last two and a half years, I think they've done fairly well. But I think once a Brexit deal were to take place, mm. I think the impact on the British business also, the economy also, is quite, uh, uh, you know, quite uncertain. Right. So the second referendum, if it were to take place, could result in a different uh, verdict coming out. Right. You know, uh